So I just want to start off by introducing myself. Uh, welcome to our webinar. It's on my, my top tips on how to live a healthy lifestyle in college. My name is Sarah Lang. So for those of you who don't know me, I am a full-time graduate student. I'm going to get more into that in my, in, in my introduction. But I'm also a health and fitness coach. It's a big passion of mine. I love helping others discover ways to live a healthy life. Um, and this is why this is what I like to do. So I hope you guys learn something new tonight or something new that you can start doing. Um, I'm going to get started with a, uh, by sharing my screen so you guys can see my slides. And we're going to get started right away. Okay. So just so you guys know, I'm not going to be able to see the chat while my slides are up. Um, but if you have questions that you're thinking of along the way, just post them in there and I'll be sure to check them at the end. So to begin, like I said, I'm here to help you live a healthier and happier life by giving you some tips, uh, giving you support and a way to learn more about uh, being able to live a healthy lifestyle while in college. Um, even if you're not in college, this can definitely apply to you. Um, if you have a busy life, if you're a new graduate, um, it's a great, uh, there's a lot of applications for this information. So welcome and thank you again for spending some time with me tonight. It'll be about a 40 minute presentation, maybe less by now. So what to expect? You're taking time out of your night to come learn something new. So my encouragement to you would be to shut off any other distractions and focus on the information in this presentation. Since I'm recording this, you can listen to it again at another time. If you want to take any notes, you can take some now or you can just sit back and listen and relax. Uh, like I said, either jot down the questions you have for the end or post them in the chat and I'll check them out once we're um, out of the slides. And the biggest thing I want you to take away from this tonight is to take action. When this is over, don't just let the information, you know, just sit in your brain. Put it to good use. Just a little introduction about me. I am a full-time graduate student studying physical therapy at Damon College. Uh, throughout my years in college, I've definitely had my ups and downs, gained the freshman 15, of course. That's uh, sadly very typical for many people going to college for the first time. I know some of you can relate. Um, let me know if you do in the chat. I'd be interested to see how many other people gained that freshman 15. Or maybe you are a freshman and you're trying to avoid that. So, of course, you know, I kind of went on that roller coaster of yo yo dieting. Um, cutting out entire food groups like carbs or, you know, eating a lot of things that were diet and light and basically full of processed chemicals instead of just eating a healthier diet and staying active. And I really had that all or nothing attitude. It was either feast or famine. I would go to the gym, eat healthy, get sleep. And if one of those was out of whack, I would just kind of quit everything else because I didn't think it was worth it. I was also a chronic excuse maker. I you know, was too tired, I wanted to take a nap, I had too much homework, I didn't have time to take for myself. But I finally decided once I got to this higher weight and had tried things and had to keep starting over that it was worth it for me to feel amazing and to feel comfortable in my own skin. So I made a change. So this is why I created this web uh, webinar for you guys. I want to teach you how to live a healthy lifestyle while in, while in college. So I am a health and fitness coach. I'm not a registered dietitian. So just a disclaimer, um, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. You're going to have to see how it works in your own life and decide what's right for you. Let's get started. So my very first tip is about meal planning. If you fail to plan, you should plan to fail because meal planning is huge. You can do it just a few uh, for a few days a week. You can do it one week at a time. Um, you know, people like to use a template. You can put it right on your calendar. Um, a really nice thing you can do is to actually create leftovers by doubling up your dinners. Um, put half in a Tupperware right away, and you've got lunch for the next day. That's one of uh, the things I do probably the most often if I don't do a huge batch of food cooking um, on Sunday. 
be sure to plan ahead for a variety of foods. Um, I know sometimes I've come back to my kitchen and been like, hey, where's all my vegetables? All I got was a bunch of tofu and some rice noodles. I don't know. And so you just plan ahead so that you really are going to get that healthy variety throughout the week. Um, if you live in a dorm and you're on a full meal plan so you don't actually cook for yourself, think about whether or not your school has a menu online. And then do a little bit of uh, research. Go to your cafeteria and see what is there every day. Do they always have a salad bar? Do they always have a certain type of fruit that you enjoy? Do they always have grilled chicken? Um, and kind of make a list and then you can still meal plan even though you're not making your own food. Um, you can also look ahead and see if there's any special days coming up where you want to plan on that meal. Which leads right into meal prep. They kind of go hand in hand. Um, on the left, there's a meal prep Monday. I really enjoy uh, taking a day out of the week to just do some meal prep ahead. Um, that bottom right picture is tempeh. It's a vegan protein that I enjoy. Um, and on the right hand side, this is kind of a depiction of one of the free groups that I run. Um, I enjoy running private challenge groups on Facebook to um, encourage people to make healthier decisions. And one of the groups I've done is a salad a day. So those are some salads that people prepare throughout the week. Um, and I like to show off their hard work. There's a few things that you can do. Um, one thing with meal prep that you really want to do is check your, your fridge and your pantry and look at your meal plan before you make your grocery list. And you better make your grocery list before you go to the grocery store. Because who else can you relate to when you head to the grocery store and then you want everything? Oh, that ice cream looks great. I really need this whole 10 pound bag of trail mix. That is not part of your plan. Then don't buy it. You can also, for meal prep, choose something from each category of foods like grains, proteins, fruits and veggies, and things like that, and enjoy that. Um, cook them, bake them, use the crock pot, and just get some foods together for the week. Um, then what you can do, say you're prepping for lunch, you can take one of your grains that you made, like brown rice, add a protein, like chicken, and add some vegetables like spinach and mushrooms and there's lunch for you it's kind of like a little burrito bowl you just kind of build it um just pretend like you're at chipotle and i just gave some examples here you guys can check them out at your leisure but one of the things i would encourage you to do is i actually hear a lot of people don't like vegetables which is sad because they're delicious so i want to challenge each one of you to try a new vegetable every week just one, try one new vegetable a week until you find a list of vegetables that you like and you can start kind of mixing it up. The other thing I would say with meal prep and grocery shopping is to, at all costs, try and avoid processed foods. Um, they are things that come in boxes and packages, have tons of ingredients on the labels, most of which are not real foods but man-made products. So shop the perimeter of the grocery store, the produce, um, and things like that. Again, if you live in a dorm, start brainstorming some dorm-friendly snacks. Stock your mini fridge with healthy foods. Uh, take away those chips and popcorn and eat some healthy snacks like trail mix or dried fruit or lara bars or things like that. Now, I tell you this because I've been there and I've done that. I lived on Easy Mac and ramen my freshman year. I would stay up late. I would eat at midnight. My friends and I, you know, would enjoy some food and snacks on the weekends together, or we would make a bunch of dips for football day, football Sunday. And I just want you to know that you can do better than that. You deserve better than that. And that is why I'm so passionate about this, because I want to help you realize that there is a better way to go through college. Another tip I have for you is to schedule your time. This is a real life example of my schedule. So I put my classes right in there. I put my workouts right in there, meetings, um, other commitments. So kind of hash out what your day looks like, put every single thing on there, and then add in your workouts just like another meeting and treat it like one. You wouldn't miss out on 
you know, your lecture, why would you skip out on your workouts? They're on your schedule, just like everything else. And prioritize. You only have so many hours in the day, so if you need to sacrifice your nap for a workout and your workout is your new priority, then you know what decision you need to make. You can also schedule in meal planning or other things like that if you want to make sure that you're productive and get things done uh, to provide yourself the healthiest week possible. Budgeting your money, I'm going to skip over this tip because I'm actually sending you this. Uh, check your email either later tonight or tomorrow for this uh, shopping guide with money saving tips. Um, hope you enjoy it. Also, getting enough sleep, and I have to say that this is my own advice that I really need to take. Uh, it's a difficult thing to do when you're in college because you stay up late when you procrastinate because you need to study, you want to hang out with friends, you um, have some activities going on on campus, or maybe your favorite TV show just happens to be at 10, which happens to me like every night. So I want to work together with everyone on this. Um, my advice to you would be to try and schedule your bedtime and awake time to be very consistent throughout the week, even on the weekends. So if you get up for seven or eight for class Monday through Friday, try and get up around the same time on Saturday and Sunday. And same with bedtime. Aim for seven to eight hours of sleep per night and try and shut off your electronics close to bedtime so that your brain can kind of decompress. So I'm curious, why don't you guys put in the chat how much do you sleep per night on average? These are some fun ideas for getting more water in your day. Pick a water bottle and set a goal. If you take your weight in pounds and divide it by two, that can be your goal in ounces of water. So for example, if you're 150 pounds, divide that in two, that's 75 ounces of water per day. If you have a water bottle that's like 20, um, 20 ounces, just tell yourself how many of those you need to drink to reach your goal. Uh, I know a lot of people tell me that they think water is super boring. I love water, so I don't understand, but sometimes you do want to switch it up. So you can add some mint leaves, some cucumber, lemon, you could add some fruits, um, really anything. And if that doesn't wet your whistle, then you can also go to herbal teas or something else, um, other kinds of teas. Alcohol and coffee will dehydrate you, so just watch how much you're drinking. Um, and say if you're drinking alcohol or coffee, hopefully not at the same time, uh, you can kind of switch on and off going between that and water to keep yourself hydrated. And I remember learning this, I found it very interesting, that if you start to feel thirsty, that means that you're already dehydrated. So try and keep up on your water so that you never feel thirsty and don't just drink when you already are. Another really important thing that maybe you didn't expect from this presentation, maybe you just expected to, me to talk about food and exercise. Getting your mindset right is huge. If you are thinking negative thoughts all the time, then you're going to have negative things going on in your life. That doesn't mean that if you switch over to a positive mindset that everything is going to be all sunshine and rainbows. But you can feed your mind with personal development, reading quotes that motivate you, reading books that inspire you, and being around others and surrounding yourself with others that are on the same path. The biggest thing for me when I started to become a coach was finding out how all these other people were so motivating, inspiring, and just nice people to be around. Sorry, I just need a sip of water because I was thirsty. Uh-oh. Um, but to get back to this, a uh, really fun exercise that I have learned is to reverse negative thoughts. And the way that you can do this is by, so say you look at yourself in the mirror and you think, I'm not skinny enough. Reverse that thought and just say, I am beautiful or I am enough. Um, I am strong. And you can even write that down on a little sticky note and stick it on your wall. You can write down the negative phrase and then cross it out and rewrite a positive phrase. Catch yourself and catch yourself in these negative thoughts. Even if you don't correct them at first, at least you're becoming more mindful of them. And then you can start to control your thoughts. Um, 
I love this quote down here at the bottom, change your thoughts and you change your world. It's so true. Um, so basically catch yourself with those negative thoughts, catch yourself making those excuses and dig deeper to find out why and then attack that. Another thing that I have found out is great about coaching and just kind of putting myself out there more is finding accountability partners. So being a coach myself, I feel accountable to all the people that I help with their health and fitness. I want to be a good role model and I want to be right there with them on my journey. So I stay accountable to them. Um, on the left hand side, that's my friend Tori. We are actually accountability partners in the more business related sense, but we do hold each other accountable for our health and fitness. Um, also have some lady, other ladies on my team. And then the bottom right corner is Damon Fit Club. So this week on Tuesday when I had Fit Club, I actually was super tired and I probably was going to try and skip my workout, but I was like, no, I have a scheduled date with at least 10 other people to work out. I'm leading this. I need to be there for them and I need to do this for myself as well. And that is what is so powerful about having an accountability partner. So think about those people in your life that are just a great support system to you. And you can reach out to them to say, hey, I'm struggling with this and I would love for you to hold me accountable in making healthy choices and be specific so that they know how to hold you accountable. Some other ideas, this is my mom and I after one of our runs, uh, she's a great accountability partner. You can make a gym date with a friend. So for example, when I'm home in Rochester, I will tell my mom, wake me up when you get up for your workout. She is so dedicated. She leaves work around 7.30, and so she wakes up a little before 6 to do her half-hour workout, get showered, get ready, and make sure everyone else is out the door too. So I tell mom, get me up when you're working out, and I will work out with you. And I can't say no to her when she comes to my room and wakes me up because I told her I'd be there. You can also have someone hold you accountable from afar. Tell them, if I don't text you in an hour and say that I've done a workout, then call me out on it. I do this. Um, sometimes I'll say, if I don't post a sweaty selfie in one hour, somebody call me out. Because that tells the world that you're committing to what you're doing. And you don't really want to let anyone down once you've told someone what you are planning on doing. Also, don't forget you time. This is kind of more related to mental health, but I think that if you don't take time for yourself, everything else gets out of whack. If you're always doing, doing, doing for other people and then never taking the time to be by yourself or to do something that really makes you happy, relaxed, and fulfilled, then you're not going to be able to serve others. Um, so you need to take care of yourself, and I think people think that's a selfish thing. But it's really hard for you to be there for other people when your own world is crumbling and falling apart. Not saying that, you know, this is, you know, an every moment thing. Maybe what makes you happy and relaxed is hanging out with your family or friends. Um, and that's completely fine. Whatever makes you feel great, meditation, reading a book, listening to music, going for a walk. Maybe exercise is your you time, but make sure you take that time for yourself. And when it does come to exercise, I didn't really mention a lot about exercise, but what I would say is make sure that you find something that does make you happy, that, you know, yeah, you're sweating and your blood's pumping and you're all, you know, working really hard, but you feel great after because you feel fulfilled and that you did something really great for yourself. So find something that you enjoy, whether it's cardio or strengthening or yoga, or Zumba, or some kind of dancing. Um, really pick something that you enjoy. It is good to get variety, and don't be afraid to try new things, but that is how you can stick with something. You're not going to stick with something that you hate. The very last tip out of my top 10 tips for a healthy college lifestyle is to know your why. Now, this might not be very clear at first, but I think this quote kind of puts it in a good perspective. When you feel like quitting, think about why you started. So why does anyone start on a health and fitness journey? In the beginning, it might be a little shallow. And I don't think that 
it's necessarily a bad thing to want to lose 10 pounds or to want to, you know, fit into these jeans. But it definitely goes deeper than that. Why do you want to fit in those jeans? Why do you want to lose 10 pounds? What is that going to do for you? Because when push comes to shove and you're exhausted and the last thing you want to do is work out, those more shallow reasons for wanting to get started on your journey are not going to keep you on your path. When things get tough, you need a deep reason why you should stay with something. It might even make you emotional. It might be because you have a family history of heart disease or cancer, and you want to take this time for yourself to, as a preventative measure to show your other family members that you don't have to submit to obesity and diabetes and cardiac disease. Um, for me, I do want to share with you guys, um, you know, throughout the years, there have definitely been times where I haven't felt comfortable in my own skin, when I've put on clothes and hated what I saw, when, you know, I'm trying on clothes at a store and I want to cry. And that is emotional for me, you know. Um, and I'm sure we've all had those moments where you're just like, I need to do something about this. And those are the things that you need to remember, not out of hate, but out of love for yourself and wanting better for yourself. And that is what is going to drive you and to keep you going when things get tough. Um, so that is knowing your why. And if you guys don't completely understand that, I'd be happy to give you resources that can kind of help you dig deeper or to talk, to, talk with you one-on-one -on -one to help you figure it out. So we are getting to the Q&A. I'm going to check in the chat. So I'm sorry to leave you on such a deep note there, but um, I hope that some of that resonated with you or you could relate to something or you even just heard something and you were like, wow, that was pretty neat. I hadn't ever thought about trying that before. So I'm going to stop screen sharing and see if there is anything in the chat. Okay. Looks like everyone sleeps about seven or seven to eight hours per night. Jess says maybe five to six. Jess, I'm with you there. I'm struggling sometimes to get six hours of sleep, but I do aim for seven. Um, so I am wondering, do you guys have any questions? I would love to address anything that you were hoping that I went over or, um, or didn't touch on that you were hoping for. Oh, I see something from Amber. Do you have any recipes to share that increase vegetable consumption? I definitely do because there are so many things that you can do with vegetables. Um, can I ask why do you just not enjoy vegetables or... Um, uh, while I'm waiting for your answer. There are a lot of ways to eat vegetables. It doesn't have to be a salad. You don't have to eat raw veggies. Um, one of the things I've loved to do is just putting them in soups. Um, I make a shake every morning, and it's a chocolate shake. It has a lot of nutrients in it, and I usually add some kind of frozen fruit, but I also add spinach, and it's blended in a way that you could never tell that there was spinach in it. Um, another thing you could do is say you're having something with a sauce, um, like a red marinara, blend some veggies in there, blend some broccoli, spinach, um, and things like that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Another thing you could do, you can make vegetables into things. So um, I don't know if you've ever heard of making like zucchini boats. So you take like a zucchini squash and cut it lengthwise, and you can kind of scoop out the middle and then stuff it with like quinoa and black beans and put that in the oven. Usually you need some kind of sauce to hold everything together that you stuff the zucchini with. You could do this with peppers, you could do this with acorn squash or spaghetti squash. Um, so hopefully that is another option that you can think of. Um, okay, so you answered, I've started to eat more, but I'm stuck on the same ones. Never been big on veggies and want ways to incorporate them without necessarily eating vegetables, if that makes sense. Right, that definitely makes sense. Some people just kind of get stuck in a rut. They're like, okay, I only like broccoli and I hate Brussels sprouts. I, another thing I would say about trying new vegetables is it's kind of winding down this time of year, but check out farmer's markets. They have some of the most unique vegetables and they're also so fresh 
and local that they taste delicious. And it's something that you might not always find in the grocery store or, um, you know, it's always nice to get out there and support your local farmers and things like that. All right. Oh, I have another question from Emily. Um, I know I have blo low blood sugar and I feel like I'm eating so often. If I don't eat, I feel very lightheaded and get a bad stomach ache. I've been told that I get enough protein in my diet, but what else do you suggest fills you up? Any good protein bars? I've tried Cliff bars. Okay, so that's a great question. Um, of course, you know, the low blood sugar thing is not something I'm very well versed in, but it is, you know, basically eating often is a great idea. Um, and one thing you can do is to eat small meals more often. So, Emily, if you can just put in the chat, how often are you eating? Um, for me, I usually eat about every two hours. So usually I'll have breakfast at 7, and that's usually my shake. Um, a couple hours later, I'll usually have some oatmeal with fruit and um, peanut butter. A couple hours later, I'll have lunch. Then I usually have other snacks like fruit. Um, if you're having trouble staying full, it could be because of fiber. If you're not getting enough vegetables, fruits, um, grains, those have fiber and that really fills you up because if you really are getting enough protein, which most people in the United States definitely do get enough protein, um, a lot of people think they need more than they really do, um, maybe suge I suggest just increasing your fiber content. Um, getting those raw veggies or cooked vegetables also have you know, fiber is just broken down a little bit. Um, other good protein bars, my favorite thing are lar bars. The reason I like them is because of the minimal amount of ingredients in them. Um, so if you look at an ingredient wrapper, you want to recognize each ingredient and you also want to, um, you want to see very few ingredients. And the reason I like lar bars, I'll type that in here, lar bars. Um, is because they are made of like dates and peanuts and then usually a few spices or maybe other fruits or other nuts. Um, and they're great because they kind of have that healthy fat that's in the nuts. It has the fruit, the dates, or whatever other kind of fruit there is. So it'll give you some fiber. It'll give you some healthy fats to um, satisfy you because that those healthy fats as well as fiber and protein will help you uh, stay full. So I would experiment with that a little bit. Even keep yourself a food journal and maybe just see how much you're eating of um, each kind of food, like fruits and vegetables. Um, and maybe you'll see a pattern. Maybe you'll see that you're not eating enough of a certain thing in the morning. Okay, next question. Carly says, I think one of my main problems is my constant craving for something sweet all the time. Sometimes I think I am addicted to sugar. I always give in and I know it adds up. Have you ever struggled with this and do you have any suggestions for me? That is a great question because I've definitely been addicted to sugar and it is something that I totally understand um, having a difficult time with because you're surrounded by it. Anything processed has sugar as one of the ingredients and you know, any food you eat at a party is probably sugar loaded. So one thing I would say is that you kind of need to control your environment. So in my apartment, I don't buy myself things that I don't want to eat or binge eat. Um, because say I have like a bar of chocolate and I'm going to just eat one square of it. It doesn't always happen that way. So I try and keep around things that are satisfying yet healthy. Um, so for something sweet, I love making banana ice cream, which might sound a little crazy and not everyone loves bananas, but I like to keep some frozen bananas in the freezer. I can just blend those up with some almond milk or peanut butter, and it kind of makes a nice ice cream type of dish. And bananas are really sweet, and you can really add any other fruit or any other flavors or spices that you might like. Um, keep something around that is sweet and healthy that you might enjoy. The thing is, think about why you're wanting craving something sweet. Is it an emotional eating type of thing? Like, oh, I'm watching my favorite TV show and I want to have a snack, like a habit, or you're feeling lonely or sad or, I don't know, other types of emotions that make you want to eat. Um, and think twice. 
drink a glass of water, see if maybe you're just thirsty and you're mistaking thunger, <laughs> thunger, that's going to be a new word, thunger, thirst and hunger. Um, you're mistaking thirst for hunger, or if you drink a cup of water and you still want something sweet, have a piece of fruit and then wait another 10 minutes or so and then say, okay, am I still really hungry? And if you still want something sweet, then pick a small portion of something that you really want. And, you know, just kind of really think through the process. Am I eating emotionally? Am I just thirsty? Will fruit satisfy me? And then if not, then go for that something sweet. But it's all about moderation. So Carly, I hope that helps your question. I have about five minutes left, so I can definitely take more questions if you guys have some. Nothing so far. I think I had another slide or two. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that if you want more support, please reach out. Um, I'm sure many of you have my email if we've been in contact. It's sarah.lang at damon.edu. Um, you can feel free to friend me on Facebook. Um, just look up Sarah Lang. You can look up my email, I think, to find me on Facebook. You can also like my page. I have a page specifically for my health and fitness, so I try and post motivational quotes, recipes, different helpful things. Oh, I just realized that I'm talking, but I forgot to share my screen with you guys so you can actually see it. There you go. Um, there's my screen now. So if you guys want some more support, feel free to reach out via email, like my page, add me or friend me on Facebook. And if you're interested in further support, if you have some health and fitness goals that you'd like to chat with me about, I do have a free online support group. I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, um, and I especially enjoy working with people who really want to commit to living a healthier lifestyle, and they want to invest in themselves um, because they know they're worth it. Um, and I can help you realize that if you want to chat, um, I'd be more than happy to uh, talk about goals, to talk about what you struggle with, to see where I could fit in there to help you. Um, I really do enjoy what I do, so never feel like you're a bother because I love to help others realize that this health and fitness thing doesn't have to be as hard as it seems. And I really like this quote, the best view comes after the hardest climb. So it might be difficult, but it is worth it. And just want to thank you guys for being here. Oh, I do see I have one more question. Um, Emily is asking if I suggest any protein powders. My biggest thing with protein powders would be to check the ingredients. Um, you want to make sure there's no artificial uh, sweeteners. So make sure that the first ingredient isn't sugar. And then if it's low sugar or low carb, make sure you look at what kind of artificial sweetener they're using. Um, a lot of them are man-made chemicals. The only artificial sweetener, which is actually pretty natural, that I do use is stevia. Um, it's made from a leaf of a plant, and so I just try and watch for that in an ingredients list of protein powders. Um, also watch for soy fillers, like soy lecithin. I'm not sure how to actually pronounce that, but it's usually a filler, and it's just kind of adds bulk to the protein powder, but no nutritional value. Um, another thing you're going to want to watch for are other ingredients that you just don't know what they are. So you're reading through and you don't recognize an ingredient. It's probably a man-made chemical that is probably not very good for you. Um, so I would just encourage you to look at protein powders that, you know, make sense to you. They look, you know, because everything labeled natural is, can be misleading because anything can call itself natural. Um, there's one I enjoy. It's Nutiva. They have a hemp powder. So it's made from hemp seeds. Um, and I think the only ingredients in that are the hemp powder. And I think one of them has cacao powder. Um, and I think maybe a little bit of stevia to sweeten it. So look for things with minimal ingredients, ingredients that you understand. And that goes for everything. Um, we have less than a minute. If anyone else has any questions, 
you can go ahead and post in there. And if I miss it, then I'll get back to you um, after the webinar. But I just want to thank you guys so much again for listening, coming in tonight and asking your questions. I really enjoyed it. So I hope you learned something new and look forward to chatting if you have further questions. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you're looking forward to using the new tips. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a nice night.